thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I'd rather be in the presence of God. Is my mic working? Yeah, I'd rather be in, it's a little bit loud up here now, Word. I'd rather be in the presence of God than anything I know. Amen. If you could turn me down up here on the monitors just a little bit, Worm. Thank you, Lord. Well, just turn around and look at somebody and say, I'm glad you're in church today. Amen. Amen. I'm glad you're here. Amen. 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 Wow. This has been an awesome time in, our, in the presence of the Lord, just in worship. Glad you're here. And I want to welcome our internet audience from where you may be watching from. We're glad that you're here with us today. And we're expecting something good. Amen. 5.30 this morning, the Holy Ghost woke me up. And when he woke me up, he, you know, began to talk to me. And one of the things he began to talk to me about was prayer. Then we come here and I walk in the door and all these people are praying. That's not a coincidence. I said, that's not a coincidence. God is not a God of coincidence. He's a God that divinely connects. He's a God of divine appointments. And I believe somebody's had already and going to have other divine appointments today. Amen. 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 I want to tell you, no weapon that formed, a real, formed against a real believer can prosper. No weapon formed against a real believer can prosper. And I need to say that the third time. No weapon formed against a real believer, a real believer. A lot of people say they believe, but their actions are different. Yes. Yeah. Their actions show what we really believe. That's right. Look at your neighbor and say, your actions, your actions prove what you really believe. Really believe. See, it's all right. You know, people can say all kinds of things, but what they say and what they do may be different. And so what they do is what they really believe. Is anybody here in the house today? Yes. Amen. Amen. Well, let me tell you what I want to talk about, and, and it's about prayer, and, and my title I put on this this morning, Prayer Lifestyle, Not Just a Necessity. Prayer is a lifestyle, not just a necessity. And I think um, a lot of times that um, people pray when they get desperate. <laughs> well, you should. I mean, that's a good thing to do. I mean, there's nothing better to do than to pray when you're desperate. But why wait till you're desperate to pray? Amen. You know, I've often said uh, we shouldn't only want to pray when we have problems, but we should learn that prayer is a communication. Prayer is communication. We're not just talking to God, but we wait like we did a few minutes ago and just let Him start talking to us. See, we talk to him, but he, he wants to talk to us. And, and when we really communicate with God and spend time in prayer, do you know what happens to us? We become more loving. We become more forgiving. We become more of a giving person. We have more of the nature of God that starts coming up and rising up through our thoughts and our minds and our emotions. And we start displaying the goodness of God when we spend time in prayer. Because whatever you're around, that's what you become. So if you're around the flesh and the worldly things all the time, then you take on that nature. But if you're around God more and more, you start taking on His nature. Amen? Amen. Now, one of the things that I found out that will happen, prayer will help you to treat people the way you want to be treated. Now, I, I could stop right there and I could say the message is done. <laughs> right there, and, and I believe that was a great explanation right there, even if I did say it. But again, 
Prayer will help you to treat people the way you want to be treated. It will help you to have more patience and understanding with other people. Oh, now you're really shouting. <laughs> See, prayer will help you to have more patience and understanding with other people. You know, uh, treating people the way you want to be treated, you know, is in, in Luke 6.31. Luke 6.31. Let me just turn over there and, and read this. I can quote it, but um, I'll turn over there and read it to you. And just as you want men to do to you, you also do to them likewise. Now, let me read it again. And just as you want men to do to you, you also do to them likewise. And you know, I'm not going to stand up here today and be judgmental and tell you how much you have to pray a day or anything like that because prayers, I said, should be a lifestyle not just a necessity. But you know, um, we went on a trip, and we were gone for a week. We got back Wednesday evening. And um, I had a chance probably just to relax. And, and, and I guess I watch people more than I normally do. I mean, I normally don't... i got better things to do than just sit around and watch people. But you know, when you're, when you're not in the fray of working and doing what you do, you know, sometimes you can relax better. And I was watching people. And especially in the airport, you know, the last, yeah, uh, the last six flights I've had, five of them were late. And I'm talking about late. And it's not fun. And not, the, now my last flight, um, you know, that, that we took, it was, it was really hilarious. You know, the, we, we landed and none of our bags came. You know, we had one bag that we had checked, but, but all of the people that was on this flight, none of our bags came. And, um, you know, 30 minutes passed, and you're thinking they should be here. 35 minutes passed, 45. And then, you know, I started watching people then because the temper started getting going and <laughs> the lack of patience because the flight was already delayed before we left. You know, you come up to the counter and you check in and, or you're, you're in, in the gate, and it's telling you what time the flight's going to leave. And then, of course, you know, um, it doesn't. Nothing happens. Nobody tells you anything, you know. And so I said prayer helps you to be more patient. Prayer helps you to be more understanding. And finally, after a, a 20 minutes, after the boarding time had passed, they told us, you know, the plane's being held up at customs, and it came in from overseas, and so the, when customs turns it loose, we'll be able to board the plane. Well, you know, several minutes passed, and no explanation and nothing, so finally we saw this plane being taxied in, and I thought, well, maybe that's our plane. Well, it was, but they stopped, and the guy got out and did stuff, and pardon me for taking a long time here, but I'm just trying to show you something. And, and then finally they got the gate, the plane up to the gate and got all of the stuff hooked up that they have to hook up to the planes before they board, you know, put the air condition in. All these people were all waiting to get on and everybody's pushing. Yeah. You know, they tell you to roll, they tell you you board by rows or numbers, but it doesn't matter. They're pushing up there and pushing away, you know, and, and getting in, in line, and they're rude, and they're saying, I was here before you, and, you know, just like, you know, we're going to get on this airplane, and we're going to sit for 45 minutes, and you're arguing about wanting to get on the plane first to sit. Anyway, you know, when they finally allowed the wheelchairs, the first class, and then the executives, and then the platinums, and then the gold, all of these others that had rushed up there that wasn't in those categories, they were real impatient. <laughs> the world would have used a different word. But they were very impatient because the different ones that were being called and, and then when they start putting the bags in, you know, all the different stuff that goes on. And then finally when we got here, and as I said, we, we were, our plane was quite a bit late. 
And then an hour had passed and our bags had still not come. People were going up to the gate, to the people that's over the bags. And you know, these people, bless their hearts, they, they're, they're probably just hourly waged people that have no direction from the company. All they do is collect bags, and if they don't come, they take your name and address and put it in the computer and tell you you'll get it. That's, a, that's what their job is. But these rude people came up cussing these people. Cussing these people, saying bad words and all of this. And, and you're in front of me, I was here first. And, you know, they were just going on and bad words was being said. And uh, finally I got my opportunity and I looked at the lady and I said, I'm sorry for all the rudeness. I'm sorry for what people's been saying to you and I know you're just doing your job. And I said... Uh, but if you can help us, we, we would certainly appreciate it. And she said, well, I'll tell you what. Let me just fill out a lost thing for you. And when your bag comes in, I'll bring it to your house. And you can go home. Uh -huh. See, kindness goes a long way. Amen. Three minutes, she had my thing filled out. I was walking out the door, and uh, Al and Jan picked us up, and we got home. And uh, four or five hours later, somebody bought, knocked on our door and brought our bag. I don't know what happened to the other people, but... Uh, <laughs> See, prayer helps you to be kinder. Prayer helps you to be more loving. Prayer helps you to be more patient. And see, one of the things that I've learned, Jesus spent a lot of time in prayer. And if Jesus had the desire or need or understanding or revelation that he needed to pray, then why would we not think the, the Master, the Savior, the Lord, if He prayed, why would we not think that it would be good for us to pray or only when we're desperate or only when we have a need? God wants us to spend time to pray. See, Jesus showed and revealed the life of the prayer. That's what He did. And He gave His life, He gave His life that you and I might have a good life. Amen? Now, I watch people in life. I mean, you know, people are really trying to live. But you know they're not trying to live with God. See, that's what makes life so difficult is, you know, and again, I'm not critical. We want a new car. We want a new house. We want new furniture. We want the best of clothes. We want the best of jewelry. I mean, I'm not against any of that. But you know what? If we wanted God as much as we wanted things, life would be much easier. Oh, come on, somebody help me out. I, I believe that was more power. I believe that deserved more than that. See, what did the scripture say in Luke, or, or uh, Matthew 6, 33? It says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these other things shall be added unto you. Now, again, I'm not critical of things. I'm just saying that we got, sometimes we get it all backwards. We start seeking for the things, and this is what causes life to be difficult. You know, there's a difference in selfishness and self-care. And what happens is when we don't spend enough time in prayer, we start getting selfish. I want this. I want that. I want this. I mean, it's okay to want. It's okay to desire things. But what does the Bible say? God will give us the desires of our heart, but he said, delight, Psalms 37 and 4, delight yourself in the Lord. Somebody help me out. Delight yourself in the Lord, and then he will give you the desires of your heart. But see, when you're delighting yourself in the Lord, what will the desires of your heart be? See? See? His will. Delight yourself in the Lord. See, and somebody say, uh, again, I want this. I prayed for this. I prayed for this. And then sometimes people pray for things they want, which is okay. But when they don't get what they want, when they want, then they start getting mad. God, you didn't do what you said. You're not keeping your word. You're not fulfilling your promise. No, 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 no. Don't go there. 
Don't go there because that's not what the Bible says, that you pray and get what you want and you live the way you want to live and do what you want to do. And you, you know, that's not what the Word says. It says delight yourself in the Lord and then you get the desires of your heart. But the desires of your heart when you're delighting yourself in the Lord is not just for worldly things. First of all, it's for godly things. It's for His presence. It's for His power, His anointing. Amen? Amen. See, we must learn to pray beyond our natural minds. We've got to learn to pray beyond our natural minds. You know, many times we're, we're just so caught up in, in our situations, our needs, our lacks, our wants. And we pray in the natural and when we pray in the natural, we don't get anywhere. We've got to learn to pray in the Spirit. See, if you really want to learn how to pray beyond yourself or beyond your natural mind, you've got to come, al come alongside the greatest intercessor who ever lived and is still living today who was the greatest intercessor ever and who is still living today. I'll just tell you Hebrews chapter 7 and verse 25, it says, Therefore he is also able to save to the uttermost those who come to God through him since he always lives to make intercession for them. He lives to make intercession for you and me. Oh, again, I could stop preaching right there and say, let's all go home and let's turn the internet off. You just got the message right there. See, see, some people think the Father, the Holy Jesus and the Holy Spirit, they just, they just see it as, as images and, and tradition and and religious, but God is real. Jesus is real. The Holy Ghost is real. Can somebody say amen? amen. So see, when we, when we start praying, we're not praying to a, an image. You know, this week I was reading, I was reading some of my, my Bible reading this week, and I was reading about, you know, where the ark was was stolen and was taken away, and and the the false god was was there, and when they brought the ark in, <laughs> the false god fell over dead, <laughs> and broke all over the floor. Oh, that just blessed me when I read that, how that God will just break up all kinds of stuff if we just see nobody did anything. They just brought the ark of the covenant in. And here there was this false god made out of man's hands and people were worshiping this god. See, it's too many times we worship and we look on the wrong things. And they brought this, they brought the ark in there and when they did, they come in the next morning and they found that the god had been, that, that, that faith god had just been broken and fallen all to pieces. Oh, what will God do if we'll just let him? What will God do if we'll just let him? See, the Holy Spirit will not only be our teacher, but He'll enable us. He'll enable us with power. Power. God will enable us with power and to break the barriers of ourself. Yes. Who do we have the biggest problem with? We think it's somebody else. See, it's always, oh, it's my boss. It's my wife. It's my husband, it's my ex-wife or my ex-husband or my children who's given me the most problem. No, you're giving yourself. Yourself. Everybody say myself. myself. Oh, you didn't say it like I did. I said self. self. Myself. myself. Come on, myself. myself. There you go. You got it. See, the biggest problem we have, we're always looking at as the other person who we're having the biggest problem. No, it's my neighbor. It's my neighbor. No, it's my boss. No, it's the banker. No, it's, no, it's not it. Your biggest problem is with you. But see, the Holy Ghost, if you'll hear what I'm saying today, 
The Holy Ghost will help you break the barriers of self. And keep your mouth shut. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Instead of talking when you're not supposed to be talking. You know, I, let me go back to, to last Wednesday when we came in on our flight. And a gentleman walked up. I was just standing there watching. And the gentleman walked up and he was first. But another guy walked in. He had a phone to his ear. And he said, you're in front of me. I was here first. The other gentleman said, no, I, I was here first. He said, I told you I was here first. So you get behind me. The other gentleman was just nice and kind. Thank God. But he started saying all this stuff to these, these, these two people standing there at the counter. And I'm just standing there watching. He was so rude. He was so angry. He was so mad. And I thought, you know, I was on that same flight. I was on that same flight. I waited for an hour before I boarded. I've waited for an hour and 15 minutes on my bag too. But I don't feel that way. I'm not treating people that way. Not that I'm better or saying that I'm better than him, but what is it that was driving him? See, see again, people, he was blaming them. He was blaming the airlines. Well, sure, somebody did something wrong. Somebody messed up somewhere. But did his attitude change? Did, he, did his attitude get his bag? No, I got mine before he got his. <laughs> I got attention before he did because he was so angry. Folks, there's, there's, this is going on in our world. This is going on in the church. Uh-oh, somebody missed that one. This is going on in the church and somehow, not just prayer, we need prayer, but we need to put actions with our prayer. See, the Holy Spirit will take us into the presence of God and pray, give us, help us to pray prayers that will energize us to change us. Amen. 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 You know, we, 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 if we all let ourselves, we can really get off course. I don't care who we are. We can get off course. Now, I'm not saying I'm there. Because, you know, the other day somebody starts saying something to me. And I felt anger inside of me. I wanted to get up and pop them right in the nose. And see the blood come running out. Oh, come on now. Help me out. I mean, I was sitting across from them. They were saying something to me that was just totally out wrong. Wrong. I mean, I didn't use that word, but it was wrong. And I'm telling you, I felt it rise up on the inside of me, that anger. And, and I said a couple of words before I realized, hey, you're going down the wrong path, boy. Because I would have been up and whoo! I would have been over the table. But I realized... I realized that's not the thing to do, and I apologized, and I said, I'm sorry for being angry at you. I wasn't sorry for what I said. I was sorry for the way I said it. <laughs> Amen? See, that's the difference. That's what I'm talking about. Prayer will help us. See, if you really want to uh, develop a lifestyle of prayer and be, uh, be a person that can handle life. Everybody say handle life. See, I'm finding out, I guess this trip gave me a chance to die. I hadn't, I hadn't taken a vacation like this, and I don't know when. I mean, you know, we've traveled, and I've stopped for three or four days, but I've been in jet lag. And, but I, it was a whole week we took off, and I hadn't taken off a whole week in a long time. But I just kind of slowed down, and, and as I said, I began to watch people. But I find that people can't handle life. They let life handle them. And so they're giving in to the situations of life and being controlled by the situations instead of allowing the Holy Spirit to help us live through the circumstances and overcome and walk by faith and get real godly answers. But in Luke 11 and 1, uh, Luke 11 and 1. I'm sorry this screen up here is not working for you guys so you can see all these scriptures. The people at home are getting to see the scriptures and I'm getting to see them. But it came to pass that as he was praying in a certain place, when he ceased, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, 
teach us to pray. Lord, teach us to pray as John also taught his disciples. Amen. Lord, teach us to pray. Now, I just believe it's important. I believe it's important that we go back to the scriptures. And when we go back to the scriptures, that we will begin to live by the scriptures. See, they were asking how to pray because they had been taught from the priest to pray traditional type of prayers. But you know, they needed Jesus to show them how to pray. And, and I don't know about you, but when I think about Jesus praying, if I got to, you know, if I got to be close where Jesus was praying... What would that have been like to be able to stand in the presence of Jesus and when he prayed? You know his prayers were anointed prayers. And so the disciples saw results from Jesus' prayers and so they said, Lord, teach us how to pray. This morning, I want us to realize that I'm not trying to give you a formula. I'm just trying to touch your heart through the Holy Ghost and through the words of God that you'll want to pray and talk to God for Him to give you a, a, a way to handle life instead of life handling you. Amen. See, the disciples observed Jesus close and He de de demonstrated a life of prayer. His fellowship and communion with God was always open. It was never broken. Everybody say, His fellowship was always open. His fellowship was always open. It was never broken. It was never broken. Wow. You said, well, that was Jesus. Well, he's, he's our example. He's our example. You said, well... I can't be perfect. We're not asking you to be perfect. We're just asking you this morning that don't make prayer a necessity. Don't make prayer a necessity. Let it be a lifestyle. See, so when I get up in the morning, when my eyes open, I just start praying. When I lie down to sleep at night and I've got my head on the pillow, I'm, I'm quoting scriptures. I'm praying in the Holy Ghost. I'm I'm, I'm just saying things it, that, that, that's easy about God. When I say easy, it's not nothing. I'm not praying for things. I'm just praying. I'm talking to God. Is anybody here? Yes. See, he would often rise early before daybreak while everybody else was sleeping. Jesus was already out taking care of his self, of handling life. Because he came for a purpose. See, every one of you have been born for a purpose. You're not a mistake. You may be adopted, but you're not a mistake. You may not know who your biological parents are, but you're not a mistake. You've, you're here for a purpose. You're here for a reason. Somebody say, thank you, Jesus. See, Jesus... Jesus loved to go to, the, to Mount Olives and, and pray. And, you know, I've seen that spot. I've been there several times and seen that spot. And it's, it's now roped off and fenced off and all guarded. And, and, uh, but back then, before the fence, before people came to see the, the, the garden, Jesus just went in those big old olive trees and he'd sit down there and, and he would just pray and, and, and talk to God. And when he would, every major event in the life of Jesus was preceded by being alone in prayer. Let me say it again. Every major event in the life of Jesus was preceded by being alone in prayer with the Father. Amen. 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 I almost want to say that the third time. Every major event in the life of Jesus was preceded by being alone in prayer with the Father. See, how many decisions do you make? I'm just asking you that you don't even talk to God about it. You just make them. Jesus, every major decision he made before he made them, he went and talked to God. You know, I've been married for 54 years and a half now. 
54 years and a half. The same woman. Amen. Only one. Amen. Only one. Now, I don't make major decisions without talking to her. Any decision. Well, pretty much right. Uh, you said any decisions. I don't make any decisions without talking to her. Now, think about that. Think about what I just said. What if I decided um, I was going to go buy a new car and not talk to her about that? What if I was going to go buy a house and not talk to her, a house that she had to live in? And let me just tell you this. We have moved. We've been married 54 years and a half, and we have moved 22 times. Twenty-two different houses we've lived in in 54 and a half years. Now, do you think I ever made one of those moves? We just decided I was going to do that? I don't think we would have been together 54 years. I think I would be talking about something different that I'm talking about today if I hadn't have discussed with her and she understood the reasons of why we were making the move. Sometimes it was from one state to another. And that's a big move when you move from Florida to Tennessee or from tennis, Tennessee to Texas or from Canada to Florida. Those are pretty big moves. And those are some of the moves we make. But do you think I would make those moves? Any, see, any major decision... I wouldn't go buy something that costs something for, for me without talking to her first. And if she goes and does it, you know, every now and then, you know, she can come home with the... Every now and then, she can come home with something new, you know, and, and, uh, uh, and of course, you know, she gets it out of the closet and puts it on, and I'll say, where'd you get that? She said, oh, I've had it for a while. <laughs> Maybe two hours. <laughs> Now, we, you know, we, we set limits. We set limits. You can go do this and without, without talking to me, and we don't go beyond those limits. But, you know, uh, my point here is if we talk to our spouse or our or people or the bank or somebody else before we make major decisions, why wouldn't it be better to go to God first and see what God thinks about our decision instead of us making a decision and wanting Him to make it right. Let's ask God to help us make right decisions, not make our decision right. See, somehow we've read the Bible that I go get what I want and I go get a scripture and I put a scripture on what I want and then I demand God, you're going to give me that because I just read it in the Bible and so therefore it's mine. No. Yes. Mm -hmm. You have to go back to Psalms 37 and 4. Delight yourself in the Lord. Because what you're asking for might be a desire of the flesh. It may not, may not be a desire that God's put in your heart. What things soever you desire when you pray. When you pray. In other words, it should say when you pray. The desires that comes in your heart, God will give you. That's, that's, that's one way of saying this. But too many times we get a desire and then we start praying. Then we start talking to the mountain. Now, mountain, you're moving because we, 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 read, uh, we read verse 23. You know, whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed and be cast into the sea. If you don't doubt in your heart, it'll happen, you know. But, but again, and we just start talking to that mountain. Well, you know what? We may, uh, we may be talking to the wrong mountain. See, that may not be in the plan and the will of God at all. See, God wants us to learn how to talk to Him. See, Jesus wanted the will of God in His life because He was here on the earth for a purpose and He wanted to please the Father. He wanted divine connections in His decisions. And I'm, you know, I'm really, the, the more mature I get, the more I want to lean on the Lord for my decisions because I've been guilty. I've been guilty of asking God to bless my plan rather than asking God for His plan. 
And I believe, I believe many times, you know, I, I believe in relationships. I believe many times that's why they fall apart is because we, we, we want in a relationship what we want and we're not concerned what the other person might want. And so when we're only concerned in what we want in a relationship, then, then what they might want, there's got to be a coming together. See, just like we've got to come together with the Holy Ghost, and when we come to the Holy Ghost, listen, the Holy Ghost will give you a good life. Oh, I, I'm telling you again, that deserves a better amen than that. I even heard people in the internet. I heard them louder than I heard you. See, the Holy Ghost will give you a good life. Somebody said, well, I, I thought it was a fight. Well, it's a fight of faith. Sure, it's a fight of faith. But the fight is keeping yourself. Keeping yourself. See, we think we've got to fight everybody else, and it's everybody else's problem. Just like, you know... Honestly, though, I mean, it wasn't my problem that the plane was laid. It wasn't my problem the bags didn't get there. But I couldn't change what was. But I could change me. I could control me. And that's what I'm preaching to you about this morning. If we want the Holy Ghost to help us, if we go to God and start spending time with God, then we'll begin to see our perspective will be different instead of getting... I mean, I didn't like spending an extra hour and 15 minutes waiting for a bag that I never got there. I didn't like that. But I never cussed anybody. I never felt like cussing anybody. I never got mad at anybody. I just walked around and got me some exercise. I walked 4,000 and something steps. <laughs> Somebody said, how do you know? I looked at my phone because it counts my steps. <laughs> so I just walked around and prayed. And I just see people getting mad. And I said, Lord, just, just touch them, Lord. I wanted to go over and lay hands on them and say, come out of them in Jesus' name. <laughs> John chapter 5, verse 19. Then Jesus answered and said to them, Most assuredly I say to you, the Son of Man can do nothing of himself, but what he sees the Father do. For whatever he does, the Son also does in like manner. Now, what is that saying? Jesus spent time with the Father. The Son can do nothing of Himself. Why? Because He's spending time with the Father. But what He sees the Father do, for whatever He does, whatever the Father does, the Son also does in like manner. Mm. See, again, I'm not, I'm not pointing my finger at anyone because I told you there's been times, I just told you like I, I, anger rose up inside of me. But you see, I realized, where did that come from? See, I hadn't felt that in a long time. I hadn't felt that rise up. And I said, where in the world did that come to me? Pastor Sharon was sitting beside me, and later I said, I don't know where that came from. I didn't even know I could get angry like that. I said, but man, I was just mad. But I, I, I said, Lord, where did it come from? And as I began to pray, the Lord began to show me where it came from. See, we're, we're all flesh and blood and, and emotional beings. And we live most of the time out of our emotions rather than by living by the Spirit. See, how many times have you heard me say that love is a decision? That's what the Bible says. Love is a decision. And, and, and you know, I, 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 I just hope Pray today that we learn to let love be more a part of our life of how we handle and deal with life. See, prayer is the key that unlocks this, all the storehouses of God's infinite grace and power. Prayer is the key that unlocks all the storehouses of God's intimate grace and power. Prayer. Everybody say prayer. Prayer. I mean, there's been messages on prayer as long as I can remember. and I've, But today I'm just talking about prayer. To be honest with you, 
This message came this morning at 6 o'clock this morning. I didn't get this yesterday. Didn't get it last week. Didn't get it on vacation. It just got up this morning and in my prayer time. Because I hadn't planned to speak today. But at 6 o'clock in the morning, <laughs> it started exploding in me at 6 o'clock this morning. I mean, I'm always prepared before. Don't misunderstand me. I'm always prepared before. But I'm trying to show you something here that the Holy Ghost will help you through life instead of you going through all the hell in life we go through. Life can be more of heaven than hell. But it depends on who we spend our time with and what we spend our time doing. See, before Jesus began his ministry, everybody say, before Jesus began his ministry. He spent 40 days in fasting and prayer. He spent 40 days in fasting and prayer. Now, why, why would Jesus do that? Because he didn't want to be out preaching the gospel, healing the sick, and then not know how to handle the enemy when he came. So he went into fasting and prayer for 40 days and 40 nights. And what happened? When he was there, the enemy came after, after the 40 days and said, you're hungry. You, you make, if you're really who you say you are, see, he was, he, there's where Jesus won the victory, and many people think they have to win the victory on the spot. No, you don't win the victory on the spot. The victory comes through prayer, spending time with God, so when you're on the spot, you've already won. You've already won. You know, there's, there's, there's a big celebrity, I, you'll know who I'm talking about, but I won't call her name. She's a very big celebrity, and a number of years ago she had a case going on here in Texas where the cattle people were, were suing her. Well, at that particular time, we live right next to a, a doctor that's on television every day, a, a psychiatrist that's on television every day. They were not friends at the time. Somehow she found out about him, and she called him, and he flew over. And he told her, he said, you're going to lose this case. You're going to lose this case. She said, well, thanks. I'm sending, paying you all this money to bring you in to talk to me. He said, well, if you'll listen to me, you can win. He said, you've lost the case inside. Your attitude's already telling the jurors you lost. If you'll listen to me and you'll begin to do what I'm asking you to do and telling you to do and get yourself together, you'll win this case. She won the case. See, we lose inside or we win inside. And it comes through spending time in prayer. See, Luke chapter 4 verse 14 Jesus returned after the after fasting and prayer, and it said, Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit to Galilee, and news of him went throughout all the surrounding regions. But see, why did the news go out about him? Why, why did, um, put that up, that scripture up there again one more time, because I want everybody to really get this. He returned in power of, he, he returned in the power of the Spirit, and news of him went out, through all the surrounding. Why? Because he had been already three times faced with the devil. He said, make these stones become bread. Jump off of this high place or bow down and serve me. And if you'll bow down. But he said, no, none of these. Get behind me, Satan. He won right there. And I'm telling you, if we'll just spend some time in prayer, whatever Satan throws our way, Whatever it is, he throws our way. We've already won in the prayer room. And so when we won in the prayer room, the Holy Ghost will help us on the spot. Mm. Wow. Well, somebody say thank you, Jesus. You 
you know what? I went to see a movie called The War Room. I don't think anybody saw that or not. But I know her. You know, we've, we've met her a few times, the, the lady that starred in this. And, and David, if you could play just a little, little 10 or 15 seconds of that. she was in the war room. I believe she was in the war room. See, if you've not seen that movie, I don't promote movies, but if you've not seen that movie, rent it, because uh, that will be worth watching. You know, we went to see that, but I, I remember that scene, and, and I thought, what would be more appropriate this morning than, than of course, there was somebody helping me out by the name of Sharon. She didn't even know what I was going to preach on. She'd come showing me that little clip. I said, That's, I'm going to show that this morning. See, <laughs> she got in the prayer room for somebody else. See, most of the time, again, let me wind this down. Most of the time, my prayers are for ourselves. And this is why we have such trouble with ourselves. If we would start praying... See, before Jesus multiplied the five loaves uh, of bread and two fish that fed 5,000, he went by a boat out into a solitary place where he prayed. And he had also heard the news of how John had been killed, how he had been beheaded. And if you read that whole 14th chapter of Matthew, Wow, go home and read the whole 14th chapter of Matthew. The Bible said in, in Matthew 14 and 14, he said, and Jesus was moved with compassion. Jesus was moved with compassion and he healed the multitudes. See, when I was 14 years old, when I was 15 years old, God gave me that scripture. I was 15 years old. God gave me Matthew 14 and 14. And he said, I want you to go and declare my word, but I want you to do it with compassion. See, you know why a lot of people can't intercede? I know everybody's not called to be an intercessor, but all of us sometime or another, we should find that place of intercession. But why many people can't is because Compassion is the motivation for intercession. Compassion is the motivation for intercession. So you see, when we get in with God and we want to spend time with God, then prayer begins to rise up and we begin to intercede. And then what we need to realize, when we're interceding, the Father, Jesus is right there at the right hand of the Father. And the Bible said that He ever lives. I read that to you in the beginning. He ever lives to make intercession for us. Amen. Amen. I, think, I think I'm just going to bring a close right here. And if the Lord leads me, I'll... I'll take it up again, but I just knew, I just knew when I got up this morning, I needed to talk to us about God helping us over ourselves and help us to define self care from selfishness. I want, you know what, if I listen to my flesh, there's so many things that I would want. But when I start listening to the Holy Ghost and start talking to God and He starts talking to me, less of the things of the world have value to me. Amen? Amen. I appreciate what God has given us. I really do. 
You know, I go to our China cabinet and we'll see things people's given us all over the world. I've got China and I've got little things that people's given me from all over the world that's probably valuable, probably. She's got some glasses in there that very, very fine glasses that some, every Christmas somebody would buy us one of those glasses. But you know what? All of that is nothing when it comes to being in the presence of the Lord. And I pray at Grace Church or your home, wherever you may be, I pray that something has been said this morning that will create a desire in your heart not to go to church when you feel like it, not to pray when you need something, not to tithe or give just when you feel that it's something you want to be a part of, but begin to surrender your life to God Mm. Wow. Let the Holy Ghost, let the Holy Ghost speak to you right now. Let the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost can change what you can't change. We all have wills. And God won't go beyond our will. But God will put circumstances and things in, in the way that will help people. And I just feel like saying this. We need to pray more than ever before. Matthew 9, 38. More than ever before. Pray that the Lord will send people into the harvest. You know, I was so touched yesterday when Roger Franklin was doing the meeting. And I heard a grandmother get up and talk about her five grandchildren. Of how it wasn't safe for them to walk down the street. My heart. I heard others I wanted to go I wanted to go fix their problems. Roger was there because he wanted to fix their problems. But we need to pray and Roger we want to pray over your next event like never before. I want to I want us I want us to begin to pray that this next event that there's not going to be an event that mindsets, attitudes, and generational generational things that's been done over and over again that the Holy Ghost will be so strong. The, whole, oh, the power of God, the power of God, the power of God's in this room right now. The power of God. I was so touched when I, I heard these aching hearts. talking about their children. I was reading about some things in that area on the internet, Roger, before I went down. I was reading some things about some of the teachers and schools and stuff that's going on. My heart was so touched. Folks, we've got to have change in our nation. We've got to have change in our nation. Father, I pray right now over everybody in this room or everybody is watching by internet. You know what they're going through and you know what they're facing. You know what mountain is standing in front of them. And Lord, as I said, I believe the biggest one is ourself. My greatest mountain is Don Clowers. So I pray, Holy Spirit, as I speak under the anointing of the Holy Ghost, as I speak under the anointing of the Holy Ghost, every spirit of darkness, every spirit of selfishness, every spirit of strife, every spirit of confusion, every spirit of unbelief will be broken. 
and healing will begin to take place right now. Healing will begin to take place right now. Come on, just worship. Just worship the Lord right now. Just worship the Lord right now. Something's happening in the Spirit. Something's happening in the Spirit. Yokes are being destroyed right now. Yokes are being destroyed. Father, I pray 938, send laborers, send laborers, true laborers, send true laborers into the harvest field. I pray, Holy Ghost, I pray, Holy Ghost, that you'll send true laborers, true laborers. Come on, folks, let's believe God. I'm telling you, the Holy Ghost is in this place today. The Holy Ghost is in this place today. Come on, it's up to you. It's up to you. You just got to enter in. I've done what I can do. The anointing of God is here. Now you just let him, let him touch you. Let him touch you right now. Let him touch you right now. Let him touch you. Everyone, something is happening, in, not only in this room, but it's happening in the spirit. Come on, let's get breakthrough. Let's get the breakthrough for ourselves. Let's not our, the barriers of ourself. Let's let our flesh, let's not let our flesh rule us and control us any longer. The Holy Ghost is moving at home. He's moving in this room. The power of God is so strong right now. Just stand on your feet, everyone. Just stand on your feet. And you at home or wherever you may be, just enter into the presence of the Lord right now. Enter into the presence of the Lord right now. The anointing of God is destroying yokes. The anointing of God is destroying yokes. Barriers are breaking. Barriers. You're, you're the barriers, some of you, than the walls that some of us have built. Some of our walls that we're trying to keep from getting hurt. We put up our wall. We don't want to be hurt again. Let that wall down. Let the Holy Ghost come in. Let that wall down. Let the Holy Ghost. Come on, put your hands together. Let's worship Him this morning. Let that wall down. I hear people saying, I hear people say all the time, I'm not going to be hurt again. I'm not going to be hurt again. Well, I probably will. But you know what? When I'm hurt, I'm not going to get angry and offended. I'm going to ask Jesus to heal me so I can heal somebody else's hurt. I'm telling you, the Holy Ghost is doing something today. I could have finished and been off of the air and told you to go home, but the Holy Ghost is inspiring me. When he woke me up at 5.30 this morning and he put this message in my heart at 6 o'clock this morning, and, and this is not one I planned. This is something that the Holy Ghost just comes. And I sit down at the computer or, or there at the keyboard and all of this stuff, the Holy Ghost started coming. And it's, it's, I've got three times more than I even talked about here today. Folks, I'm telling you, it's time that the intercessors stand up. The intercessors stand up. It's time that the power of God begin to be seen in our nation. And at Grace Church, we can change the barriers that's inside you. See, the barrier inside you, that's what I want to see broken today. And that God is not something that we participate in when we feel like it. That the Bible is not something we read because it's the Bible and it's the thing we should do. The Bible is God's Word that we desire to be a part of our life every day. Worship is not something that worship leaders do. It's something we all do. See? So many times, let me just finish again one more time. 
So many times we're trying to put, we're trying to live life to the fullest with ourselves rather than letting God help us to live life. And so therefore we make life a mess. We make life uncomfortable and miserable because we're trying to live the life instead of letting God live the life in us. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Well, you may be seated if you can. You at home. I just pray that thank you so much. Just let her stand there and she can, in just a minute, we'll close with her today. I'm telling you, did you get anybody get touched today? Well, we're going to receive our tithes and offerings. And don't, don't, don't just write the check. Don't just drop some money in. Put your heart in that gift today. Say, Lord, this is, this is something that I want to do. I want to give. I want to sow. I want to tithe. And do it with joy. Don't do it with obligation. Do it with joy. And never give with obligation. I always give with joy. I always give because I want to give, not because I feel like I have to give. Amen. Amen. Did you get blessed today? Amen. David, could you or Cheryl put our website on the on the screen. Could you put our website on the screen? GraceChurchUSA.com Because you that are watching, you that are watching, if you could just, you know, if you could just send an offering or a tithe if you don't go to church somewhere. And you just go to Don Clower or GraceChurchUSA.com GraceChurchUSA.com And uh, if you will just go there, there's a place you can donate. GraceChurchUSA.com. If y'all can type that on the screen, okay. If you, there it is. GraceChurchUSA.com. Everybody just say that. GraceChurchUSA.com. Mm, we tried to make it simple. <laughs> so you just go there to GraceChurchUSA.com. Go over there where it says donate or give. I'm not sure what it says. But anyway, just push that button, get your credit card out, and man, it's done. <laughs> and it's in our bank account just that quick. <laughs> Amen. Did you get blessed? Amen. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. You that are viewing, thank you so much for your gift and for tuning in and being a part with us. Let's give Jesus one more hand clap of praise. And then the ushers are going to come.